We're here with Madeline Kopp from ITV, and she is head of sustainability. Uh, Madeline, could you tell us a little bit more about what you're actually doing and how that relates to sustainability and responsibility topics? Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, I think, first of all, ITV recognizes it has an enormous privilege to be able to reach 40 million people every week. Um, and with that, we see that as a real opportunity to harness that power of our programming, our most loved, most watched programs to create long-term change for good. And essentially, that's our social purpose. The way our sustainability strategy works is we've then narrowed that down into three priorities, uh, people, planet, and partnerships. And essentially what that means is people means we want to reflect modern society, both on screen and behind the scenes. We want to have an inclusive culture, um, and we want to have uh, access to services. So that means a subtitling, signing, audio description of our services so all can access them. On Planet, then we want to give environmental messaging through our programs. Again, always, always looking at what is our sort of key selling point as a broadcaster. So using the power of our programs whilst minimizing the environmental impact of our operations. And finally, on Partnerships, it's again using our power and reach to um, create change for good and for communities and causes and also help our people uh, make a positive difference as well. Mm. Um, and then drilling a bit further down on those three pillars we've got um, commitments. So we've got four commitments under each of those three P's as we now call them. Um, and each of the four commitments has a sort of structure around it. So the first one is always about leveraging our on-air reach, doing what we do best. Uh, one is about leveraging our workforce because we, we recognize that our workforce is you know, our biggest asset and we want them to really get involved. Um, one is about how um, we do business day to day. So that's our policies, our procedures, our resources, our culture, um, so that people can be their best um, at ITV. And the final one is how we work with others. So that's looking at our value chain, so what suppliers we work with, um, what productions we work with, down to how we transmit our programs and essentially the viewers who, who um, watch our programs. Um, so that's the structure mm -hmm. and it's important to have structure, otherwise you need to focus, um, otherwise you can do lots and lots of activities and then not have that impact. Mm -hmm. um, so the structure is important um, and as I said we've got sort of yeah. four commitments on those themes under each of the the, the partnership. So how is the uh, sustainability and responsibility area at ITV actually structured? So who's working there and how are people working together and what different areas are there? Well, we're a sort of central team of about 15 in total. Um, we've got a director of corporate responsibility who I report into um, and then we have a sort of head of sustainability and then some and a head of campaigns and appeals who, who purely focuses on, on all the on-air campaigns and appeals that we do. So it's a, quite a healthy team, but of course we rely on everyone around the business to actually sort of embed and act out our, our sustainability um, commitments. Um, so we've got someone in social partnership uh, within the studios and commissioning focusing on there, but we've got many allies and champions and, and a network across the business to, to help us make this happen. So if you think about these four commitments uh, on, on an organization, on a company level, um, how do these commitments then, then relate to individual people working in the company? We, we've just seen a number of people in the beginning of this week of the MOOC uh, working in ITV and doing social, environmental, ethical things, things on responsibility and sustainability. So how, how would these people connect to these different areas that you just mentioned? Lots of different ways. Um, I think the, the important thing first of all is, is, well my role for example, is not to set a strategy and, and devise it and put it out there to the business. First off, it's important that we as a team go out with all the different business areas, talk to them about our social purpose, what we're here to do, and really understand from them where they can make the biggest change within their area of influence, if you like and really get their buy-in into it so that they come up with ideas and ways that they're excited about and how they can contribute to our to our aims. That's more a sort of departmental level. On an individual level, we do a lot of awareness raising and comms. You know, we've got really high employee engagement um, scores, which shows people kind of buy into ITV's brand and like working here. So when we talk about what we're doing, people naturally want to get involved, whether it's environment and recycling around the office or in one of our charity appeals 
or we've got a volunteering policy um, and they want to spend some of their time giving back on a cause that matters to them. So, so it's, it's a little bit of structure there and they think about how they can contribute and also individuals wanting to see how they can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, so you just you mentioned structure twice there. So I wonder about uh, what, what kind of structures can you put in place so that you would actually mm, be able to combine those typical commercial topics that the company always has with the, the social environmental topics. Um, so what, what, what kind of structures can you create to make that happen? Yeah, I mean, for example, in, in accountability, we've, we've got the sustainer, we've got the corporate responsibility team, but we've got a corporate responsibility strategy board. Mm -hmm. Um, that's quite important because it's chaired by our group legal director who reports directly into our CEO and it has 10 directors, influential management board mm -hmm. directors on it. So we've got, for example, the director of investor relations um, and then we've got sort of director of HR. We've got uh, sort of quite a wide touching yeah. all the main uh, departments. So it's essential that we have that leadership and that, that sort of high level uh, management buy-in and they're sort of they make sure that what we do um, and what we advise the business aligns with our business objectives mm -hmm. because we're, we're here to make great entertaining programs and to increase our audience share and uh, you know every, as every business wants to do in, increase their profits mm -hmm. but we make sure that our, our sort of corporate responsibility um, objectives uh, align with those yeah. so that we're all going in the right direction yeah. Um, so there is a structure and a framework there, but equally we have to move with the latest trends, mm. the latest, I mean we're a TV broadcaster so if a big social topic comes up we have to respond to that. So, so we want that framework there mm -hmm. to give us some focus and to um, you know, give us great impact, but we've got to be yeah. pretty fluid to, yeah. to work with everyone. Wow. So, so you were mentioning um, that the the people sitting in uh, um, in that group are actually people who come from different departments of the company, mm -hmm. so from HR, from marketing, maybe accounting. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit more about how these these different company functions actually contribute to the sustainability and responsibility agenda? So, what do they do? What what um, is their bit that they yeah, can do? It, it very very much depends mm -hmm. on which area. Obviously, we have the production side of the business which is our kind of bread and butter, if mm. you like, the making of programmes. So, for example, we've set up um, a framework called the Social Partnership Framework. Essentially what it is, it's, it's repackaged up our responsibility priorities and put them in a set of guidelines for them to follow. So when they're commissioning a programme, when they're making a programme, have they thought about the diversity of the people that they're, they're casting, um, both on and, and in their production teams? Have they thought about, is it the most environmental friendly way of doing it so we work with a carbon calculator called, tool called Albert so we and we give them the training and tools to do so but it's very much they then have to lead on that and and be part of those decisions and make those and feel comfortable with those decisions so we sort of give them the tools and then they run with it so production is obviously a large part of our our business um, and then it, it touches every part in a different way so talking about something maybe a bit more dry if you like mm -hmm. so our procurement team mm -hmm. um, so again we're, we're looking at all the different um, procurement policies we have um, the business ethics the environmental standards the labor standards all those sort of things and over the years what happens is a bit of a maybe a patchwork mm -hmm. of when new legislation comes in for example and we sort of stitch it together again as our, our role is to come in and go we have to work with them mm -hmm. um, and to say, is there a better way of repackaging this? Can we do, say, a um, responsibility policy and then can we help you build on annexes so that you feel equipped to ask the right questions at the right time? Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's very different for, for every, every department, really. But what I'd say the most important thing is, is that as a sort of sustainability professional, you can't impart what you want mm -hmm. them to do because they just see it as another thing on their very long list, you know, they've, they've got yeah. certain objectives they have to hit, so you have to very much um, place yourself uh, as someone who is trying to help them do their job mm -hmm. better. One enabler in a certain way. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, you, when, we, when we frame it that as trying to be more efficient and all those sort of things, then they, they get on board much quicker yeah. and it, you can work in partnership much easier. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm wondering about uh, if, if you think about the, uh, the, the students 
uh, trying to learn things that help them doing those kind of jobs and contributing susta to sustainability and responsibility and ethics topics once they are in the job. So what, what, what are the things that these people might want to learn? What are the skills, the competence, the capabilities that someone needs working around sustainability and responsibility? Actually the most important thing is your passion. That will get you a long way in, in this uh, profession. If you're passionate about what you're doing, sustainability, and you re really believe in it, then that goes a long way. I'd say also with that, you need a lot of perseverance. You need to be pretty tenacious because you've got to remember that a lot of people here are there to do what's in their job descriptions, nine to five, get on with it, and then go home and forget about it. And you're the sort of thorn in their side sometimes, trying to remind them to do things a different way or add on something slightly new or and so you've, you've just got to persevere, persevere, persevere. So there's a lot to be said about having passion and drive. Um, the other thing you've really got to be is a people person um, because it's, it's the people you work with who implement these new programs, initiatives and practices. You're not the one that can, can do these things physically, you're sort of a, an advisor and a consultant so you really need to get people on side and get their buy-in and get them on board. So literally building relationships internally, externally, just you really have to nurture that relationship and get them to, to understand where you're coming from um, and also you to have that empathy to understand what they're doing. So relationship building is, is really key as well. Um, and then going you know slightly back to the technical side, um, it, you have to be, you're sort of aware of future trends, um, future issues that are coming up, always kind of horizon seeking is that best practice. But we're always looking at uh, risks and opportunities. It's sort of a risks and opportunities game sustainability in many ways. So, so in terms of risks, people prick their ears up when you talk about that, whether mm -hmm. it's you know legislation or regulation or reputational risks, then you need to be very clear with the with the business. Well, if you, you don't do X, Y, and Z, then this could be the impact. You know, that often gets people talking. Um, but also on the opportunity. So a lot of pers persuasion skills as well, yes. like trying to, uh, to explain people why this is important and, and bring them on board in a certain way, motivate them, yeah. Exactly, and when you start talking to people and building that relationship, you, s mm. you start to understand what sort of presses their buttons, if you like. Yeah, yeah. So whether it is the hard you know, legislation or whether they actually care about this yeah. or whether it's the social side. And so you, can s you start sort mm. of playing your game in your head as to what will get them on board. Also, you know, aside from the, the risk side of it, um, there's the opportunity. We're, we're, we're constantly looking at sustainability as, you know, a, a big positive. You know, what, what does a great future look like? Yeah. So whether it's, you know, implementing environmental measures and we can make great cost savings and reputational yeah. benefits to raising loads of money for charities and causes. So it's always looking at the, the opportunities mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's, it's a sort of risk and positive element yeah. of it as well. Great. Wow. So, so I think we will have many people on that MOOC who are actually in a normal kind of management job who are not sustainability or responsibility or ethics professionals, but people who work in accounting or marketing or, or well, lawyers, like some people we've seen today. Um, so I wonder, what would you recommend to someone in that, that kind of job? Should they, and they're interested in sustainability and responsibility, should they change their job or should they find something that they can do on their job that relates to it? So how? How would, would you recommend for these people to pursue their passion for these topics? First of all, I'd see what you can do within your role because, I mean, it's something we want to set up and make people aware that there's something everyone can do in their role to, you know, different varying um, sort of limits, if you like. But we're looking to set up a sort of network group so that we can just raise awareness of what we're doing on our strategy. One thing that isn't so helpful sometimes is when someone comes up with a grand we're always open to new ideas, mm. but when someone wants to go off on such a tangent to our strategy, it can be a bit difficult to manage. So first of all, ask your organisation, what's your sustainability strategy? How can I get involved? You know, become a sort of champion, if you like, internally. So you, if you're an IT person, you can find out, well, is there something I can influence yeah. there or, yeah. or help out there? Um, so that's that would be the best thing and, and most helpful thing to do. And then, of course, get involved in other projects where you, where you can, whether it's the volunteering or the fundraising or the recycling in the office. There's, there's going to be lots of opportunities. And if, if from that you, you carry on building your, your awareness and passion, then mm. take it further by all means, yeah. yeah. So we've been talking a lot about, about other people for now. So I, w I wonder about 
yourself and how you actually entered that role and, and what your passion in, in uh, that area is and a little bit about your background maybe as well. Um, and uh, also to understand a little, bit, uh, a little bit better about how you see yourself in the organization while you're here and not somewhere, somewhere else and what kind of opportunities you might see in doing your job in a company like, like ITV yeah, uh, sure. as opposed to different sectors maybe even. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess I've, I've always been interested in sustainability. I, um, so more I started off on the environment side. Um, so I, I did an undergraduate in um, environmental geoscience. It was very sort of earth sciencey, very sciencey. Um, enjoyed that. I then moved on to do a master's in environmental technology. It was a bit of a misnomer because actually it covered economics. It, it, it was very broad. But that started opening up my mind to it's not just about the physical environment um, and there's lots of sort of socio-economic factors going on so and then I was still you know fairly young and quite idealist in my in my thinking so I started working for some not-for-profits mm -hmm. um, and also the public sector in sort of climate change and uh, energy policy and lobbying and um, working with governments and, and that was I loved it it was brilliant but I started seeing actually government policy can only go so far. It's, it's great to have that, it sends a really important signal to the market, but it's actually big businesses that have the power and influence to invest the money and um, influence behaviour change. So that's where I saw actually that's really exciting, I can make big mm. change happen from within if you like. Yeah. So that's when I started looking at um, corporate roles and to me just my where I am right now is I wanted to work for a big brand mm. that had that impact sort of consumer um, facing impact and and had that as I said ability to, to change behavior and, and kind of what better place in a way to do it in yeah. one of the you know UK's biggest commercial broadcaster mm. um, sort of 80% of the UK viewing public watch our programs every day and and we're all about being at the heart of popular culture so it, it's it's not necessarily about having these big sort of niche programming about whether it's environment or, mm. or whatever the topic it's more about getting those messages in our sort of most loved most watched programs every day and sort of normalizing that sort yeah. of behavior and thinking so it's yeah it's an exciting time and I think there, there are lots of possibilities here but I think we're also very honest and open that we've got a long way to go you know Sustainability is not a short game; it's a sort of marathon, if you like. So, we're sort of we've just brought out our CR report, and we're very open and honest about this is the progress we made, this is where we are, but this is what we've got to do. And we celebrate our successes, but we're we're, we're sort of honest um, about all the stuff we've still got to do. So there's there's lots to do, but it's exciting times. Yeah, excellent. Is there anything else that you would like to uh, communicate to uh, um, the students sitting sitting on that course and interested in these topics? Anything that we haven't covered that we, that we might have missed so far? I'd say learn more, go with your intrigue and your passion and your interest. And, and when you go, f you know, whether it's an internal opportunity, um, finding out what your, your employer is doing on sustainability or, or going for a new role, um, then ask them what they're, what they're doing in this area. Um, you, know, you can do your research beforehand, but make your employer or future employer know that you're interested in this area. Um, they're meant to listen to across stakeholders in, in terms of finding out what's material to them. And if, if more and more people are asking, especially as they're entering a new um, new organisation, hopefully it will sort of ripple out and, and people will realise that it's actually really important to, uh, to take note and take it forward. Yeah, so. Excellent. Thank you, Madeleine, for your time. It was very, very insightful what you had to tell us about how all of the different people and the different departments and competences come together finally in order to create sustainability responsibility on the organizational level of, at ITV. Great, thanks. Thank you.